Good evening, morning, afternoon, whatever applies to you, and welcome to another EuroLeague as we head back straight into the Twilight Zone. Uh, that is this year's LEC Spring Split because G2 has lost the best of series. Uh, BDS probably going to win MSI at this point. And uh, yeah, no, do not change your channel. This is not side select. This is not big brains. This is, in fact, Thorin joining us on uh, EuroLeague. Uh, also joined, of course, by the man whose League of Legends takes are about as consistent as his microphone sensitivity, Mr. Kira. Uh, and as I said before, we are also joined by the Demon Barber of E Street or Esports Street, whatever scans better. Uh, Mr. Thorin, or as you know him, the angry man that blocked me on Twitter, even though I swear I've never interacted with him. Uh, that works, isn't it? Before... By the way, what take has he had? What's the why? Why is his takes inconsistent? What's the big one that you're thinking of? Nah, it's just ev everyone. Uh, everyone pretends that he hates Zerka and thinks he's really bad, but chirps up every time he plays well. And sort of similar situation with Knight, I okay. guess. So it's uh, yeah. I mean, I just like to say mean things about Kira. That's what it really Fair comes enough. down to. <laughs> en enable. I'm okay. the guy who I'll look at the YouTube comments or whatever the most ridiculous, outrageous, like false narrative is. I'll just big it up and pretend it's real and push oh, it until other But it's people. weird. If people don't know, that is actually sort of a weird British thing that we do in our culture where like, even though like, it's one of the things I found a weird when I met Americans is like when they're friends, they actually just support each other. Like <laughs> in England, you're supposed to, the crack is that your mate's getting wrecked. Like Richard used to say this on By the Numbers. When Henry G did that really stressful project where he became general manager of Cloud9 and built that massive squad, Richard said, oh, are we? I used to just call him up each night and read out all the Hitchell TV comments telling me shit. It's like, Fucking hell, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is funny. I can't lie. That is bad. That's top tier. Yeah. Like... <laughs> and Cocklord37 is saying, Henry G should kill himself. Exactly. <laughs> 380 upvotes on that one. Yeah, like <laughs> it's gay. Always, yeah. always a good method. Yeah, always there. Yeah. Always yeah. good. But yeah, along similar lines, I guess, uh, before we talk anything esports, I do have to ask the patented would you rather. And it's a simple one this time, guys, but I don't think an easy one. And it goes as follows. Would you rather, I'll start with you, Thorin, would you rather have a panel of Zoomers be in charge of all the music that you listen to or a panel of Zoomers be in charge of all the books that you read? Here's the thing. I think it, I think this one's not as tricky as maybe you think it's. I think I would easily pick the music one because here's the thing. Music's a bit like movies where it, this is the most elitist way to say this, but essentially people can be right, but for the wrong reasons, as in like, I think shows like, in my opinion, shows like Game of Thrones show this. The first few seasons were mega, yeah. but you, everyone pretends like it got bad on the last season. It's like, bro, if you even say that, that's a mad sus take to me because to me it got bad like, you know, three or four seasons in. So essentially they were when they were saying, oh, I love this on season one. And I was like, yeah, it's brilliant. When they're saying that on season four, I don't think they're liking it for the reasons I'm liking it. So essentially I think they could accidentally, like some music's all right that's in the charts. The problem is if you let Zoomers pick the books though, Rich, <laughs> I don't think they could even accidentally sort of trip over and pick a good, like even, even stuff like Harry Potter, I just despise. Like I've never read any of those books so to me i don't feel like they could ever get any of the books right what, what they could, if I, like I said they could flukily get some music right or half decent or just tolerable you know what if i threw in like uh documentaries because that'd be another banger because you've got some see the thing is if i say movies or something that sort of applies like music right there's going to be some accidental yeah. clock there'll right be some, there's some chris today. nolan one or something exactly yeah. yeah but you know documentaries that's uh, i've i've got if you ever got definitely Netflix... pick a lot of bad ones i'm pretty sure yeah. no so the joke is i actually i thought i loved documentaries until things like netflix because the ones <laughs> that are on netflix are absolute cancer like if you like documentaries this is the worst versions of them aren't they i don't know the good ones yeah what about what about you kira what are you picking Oh, I couldn't handle books. Like, I, I, it has to be music. I couldn't have these wee cunts fucking picking me my books, man. Like, no, uh, no fucking chance, by the way. Like, when I speak to the younger generation about like books and stuff and all that, like, it's it's actual like straight up cancer. Like, how bad it's gone. Like, literacy takes and stuff. So yeah, that's a no go. Yeah, fair enough. No, I think I think I would have to side with you guys on that one. Unfortunately. Anyway, let's jump straight into all things LEC and talk about the first matchup of the week, which for some reason, actually I tweet, I tweeted uh bye bye fanatic or something for some reason in my head i just thought they were out i was like they've been shit and then they played a series and they looked yeah. a bit shit and they're like and then they lost it and it was a best off so they're out nope they're not out and in fact they're playing against my pick to make the final that was a 
a good take, wasn't it? So, uh, yeah, I actually <laughs> really... Wait a minute. How are you ever going to talk about his takes if you had a take? I know. That's what I'm up against. No, no, no. That's what I'm up against. That's some copium and half in it. Fucking hell. Yeah, no, it was, no it was my, I presented mad lines on uh, okay. side sled, didn't I? I was going to make the final. But, yeah, I, the thing is, I... I I know at some point it kind of ceases to become a prediction in the sense that it's not really what you think at a certain point, but I hate jumping off predictions. I'm actually just... Oh, so you, you mean you did say Mad Lions were yeah. actually, I forgot about that, okay. Uh, but yes, but I mean, despite me thinking they were already out, like I guess we did see some signs of improvement from Fnatic. Obviously, they beat G2 near the end of the regular season. Uh, they weren't awful for the whole of the Australis series. It did go three games. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll start with you, Thorin. Firstly... Uh, I mean, which of these two teams do you think will take this series? And hypothetically, could either of these teams make any noise, have some kind of playoff berth, or are they both just drawing dead? I do think, I'll answer the second part first. I do actually think that Astralis is better than both teams, and I even think directly head-to-head they'll beat both. So I'm not too worried, actually. Like, I'm not that concerned about that whole thing of, like, what if Mad Lions qualifies? Like, it's true. I, I actually think, by the way, the real sleeper on that one's the Koi angle. People don't know. As soon as you get mad out of the equation to qualify, then we have to worry that Koi bloody just gets through and then quite So people haven't even thought of that. Like, the nightmare of MSI, unless Vitality wins the split, probably is ruined, unfortunately, guys. So if we rewind it, I actually think Astralis looks pretty good. Certainly... Look, I can't say I'm going to like put my life on people like 1-1-3 to win a series. Maybe they could have a bad game. Who knows? Certainly possible. But I think they're much better than Fnatic and Mad Lions. The problem with both those teams is not only are they really flawed for me, but this is a killer when I'm trying to do predictions. The players that I actually believe in and think are good sometimes don't play well in these teams. And that's the killer. Like, if people watch the LPL, I really could watch all those LNG games and go, I don't care about what the bot lanes like. Scout and Tarzan can beat this team. I, I don't know that I can do that with Fnatic and the Mad Lions. Like, Mad Lions is, I even think it's it's actually kind of dodgy to me. People are giving all the flame to the other names, like the bot lane, etc. I actually think even the big stars, like even El Yoya's had a couple of sus games this split. Niski's had a whole bunch that were about half as good as last split, so I just feel like, I, I do think that Fnatic will lose to Mad Lions. I think Mad Lions is good enough to beat them, but I actually think it's fairly tiered. Like, I think Fnatic loses to Mad, Mad loses to Astralis. Let's be real, Astralis probably doesn't do much beyond that, but I think they can get second in this group. They've shown me enough quality, I think. What do you think, Kira? Who, who do you think is taking this one? So what's crazy to me is I used to praise Mad for having, like, they were, they always played the most, like, consistent regular season style, and it was so good to get in regular season ones, okay? And now that style, they've just abandoned it completely. They can't find a style. A lawyer who's usually one of the most, like, concrete pieces in all of the LEC has had, since finals, like, last split, has just not been playing well. And, like... Uh, if any idea of you have of conceptualizing Mad being a good team is informed by the fact that a lawyer must be playing well, and so, and even the Nifty a lawyer dynamic, I would say, is that is worse. Like I actually just see Mad on like a complete like downhill trajectory, and I'm not sure I actually see Fnatic on the same downhill trajectory. I actually think Ooh, Fnatic. You're gonna take Fnatic to win? Yeah, I'll take Fnatic to win. But I am telling you, something, I am fucking so fed up with Reckless, mate. This cunt is I'm still allergic to dealing damage, and. In so many fight situations, it's awful how woeful he has like been in terms of like output and damage and like playing and what perceived as like safety. Uh he's not always like the biggest offender. Like I would say that Advian does end him in lane like a fair whack of amount. Like Reckless's like lane control and stuff is still pretty good. Like there's times where like Reckless is getting like double killed by the enemy bot lane, but it's like Advian's hooked them in, and it's like. What's he really to do there? I'm I'm not too sure, but I w- I would I would actually really take Fnatic, and it's more of a momentum take. The other one being a part of it being as there was glimmers in the Astralis series of humanoid Razork, right? And I'm I'm not buying the stock in terms of that can win the league anymore, right? But I'm buying it in terms of it can maybe beat Mad Lions if it shows up. That's kind of where I'm at with these teams. I think both of them, on average, will lose to Astralis. But if the team does go ahead, I think a Fnatic, a game would have the better chance of beating Astralis on the aggregate. I actually, more than anything, want to just kind of watch the leader um, humanoid matchup again, because last time in Reg, it was, well, the past three, like two, three games, it was kind of a banger. So it's pretty good. 
Let, By the let, way, that's also the reason I have no faith in Fnatic. It's like, especially this this last this year, I feel like I have no read on if Humanoid will ever be good in a game of League of Legends. I can't even tell. No, you can't tell. There is yeah. no factor that seems to give it away. So in the past, he's someone I always would assume. Eventually, you flip a coin, you'll have an awesome game. I have no clue if he's ever going to perform again, mate. I have no idea. So <laughs> let me uh, let me ask you guys this because how do we legislate? I mean, for the fact that both these teams are just not as good as Australia, or that none of us believe that they would be able to beat Australia. So like if we just go player for player. Why, how is it, what, what is the reasons, or obviously we can't know for sure, but hypothesize for me, Thorin, why is it that Australis are just such comfortable favorites over these two teams who, in theory, on paper, just are massively superior, basically, across the board? I mean, part of it is, as you as you're pointing out, essentially the name value doesn't matter that much right now in League of Legends. Like the names don't. Even, the joke is the names aren't the names anymore. Like the name on paper, Reckless, should dwarf a name like Kobe. But I'll tell you what, Kobe is night and day way better than Reckless right now. Like he's actually, well, ironically, Kobe is right up there with Crowdy, mate. It's just like best ADC. Like this guy's really cracked. So I think there's one. Similarly, right back in the past, you could never have compared Leader to fucking Niski and Humanoid. They're guys that are worlds every time unironically leader is better right now so i think for me the main aspect is i actually think astralis is getting more than the value of their names like across the board first of all the team's really coherent like the player that showed me that was 113 i thought this guy was one of the worst lec like yeah. recruitments in years last split but now on this one he actually looks good like he actually looks like he fits the team the leader things just work like a slam dunk the whole way through and you can see by the way props to leader he's clearly developed his game a bit since he was last at lec and then the the bot lane part was probably the best part of the team anyway beforehand. So they've actually sort of got quite a coherent team. Whereas when you go at Madden Fnatic, like I say, you look at the big names, most of them aren't really the big names anymore. And then you look at the teams and man, these teams are a joke. Like they have a hard time drafting, their identity sort of cracked. So for me, Astralis, it's not even like the world beaters. They just have better overall stars that can prove they can reliably deliver the team identity set. And actually even things like drafting seems to have been sort of edged their way. So I, I don't know how they've done it myself, mate, like mad props to them, but they, they just are better for me. Yeah. I would say that I felt that basically split on split on split. If you go back that AOD has been like a seriously underrated coach again, I can't, I do hear quite a lot behind the scenes every time I've ever asked. People tell yeah. me like he definitely knows the game and they're impressed with his coach. And yeah. Yeah. And it's but like he he's gone from, you know, should definitely have the 10th best team. And then, you know, they sort of just miss out on playoffs or whatever. And it's still like an impressive thing contextually to now. It's like, well, they finished fucking second in regular season and probably yep. they won't make top four, but you wouldn't be amazed if they did. And yeah, again, without working on a shoestring budget, oh, by absolutely. the way. Like, th these players are all super, super, super cheap. So, yeah. And no. remember that stupid caveat that no one gives him credit for. Dude, you have to live in Copenhagen to play in this team. Yeah. You yeah. don't even live with everyone else in Germany. Like, th mm -hmm. that's, you, this, uh, that's why I don't think people get it. For me, teams like maybe SK sometimes is like this. It's like, dude, they don't even sometimes look like they're recruited from the same pool. They just go, do you want to join our team? <laughs> You're in. You know what I mean? And they don't even look like they're in the bidding sometimes. So yeah, however that guy at Australia, if he's the one who recruited those players, he's fucking killed it, mate. Yeah, he must no, have he had is. the worst budget. He's just, like you say, he always overperformed because you're right. People remember this lineup, but remember that one last summer was like, it's inexplicable. Didn't they, didn't they win some like, like four out of the first six games or something? It was ridiculous. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, right, let's move on quickly to the other uh, best of three matchup, which is going to be G2 versus SK. I don't want to talk too much about this matchup specifically. To be honest, I don't think it's a particularly interesting <laughs> matchup on paper. Uh, but yeah, so my question, I'll start with you, Kira, on this, is are we now seeing sort of enough cracks in G2's armor to think that, you know, maybe these spring playoffs are actually going to be a lot more open than winter? Like, And, you know, if anything... What would you say has gone wrong or is different this time around than last time? Like, why aren't G2 looking as formidable? Uh, well, it kind of looked to me, well, I don't know why, but like, there's a couple of like what runs on uh, not having like Yike on the like carry junglers and they've kind of moved them over onto like the engage. So, like, the Vi, Jarvan, Gragas priority, I know they like them because they, they think of them apart from the Vi as like these flex picks. Uh, I think Yikes generally played pretty well on them, but I don't think it's as good. It was as good a style as what GT were doing with them on like the carries. The second one would be, um, I think there was a massive and the games two and three. I think Caps just had 
like bad like individual games wasn't playing as good and then Mickey X on three another one is I think G, it looks like to me like G2 and Fnatic were um scrimming each other because they had this uh virus priority um and when I kind of like, look at that I kind of see like um it's like a cover up for the pot like the not the inability but the fact that like Han Sama might not be wanting to play like the Zeris and stuff like that but I feel like they probably should have just went for like a different line and maybe just went for more of like a scaling one I feel like there's still like a version of G2 that can beat all the rest of the teams it's just they've went for like this um like uh, they went for like this line like this prepared strat with the Pantheon into Koi and it just didn't work at all and it looked pretty prepared it looked like this is something that was really practiced, but when you actually seen it in the server, it wasn't anywhere near as effective. Do you feel like they're limit the testing? Was. Like they're kind of just low key fucking around because of how the no. system works, or you think this is like a legitimate stratagem that's just gone to gone back? Yeah, I think it was. I think that's like. I think you have to take if you're playing series. I think you have to take every series as like serious. I don't think any team is really putting themselves in the lower bracket on purpose. I think that's a bit mad. Um. So I think it was like a legit, not so much, I, I tweeted it out, game one, like, you know, Dylan Falco, like, was all over Koi in the draft. But the problem is, is what Dylan Falco or the players do in the draft is so risky that g g uh, games two and three are just a mess. Because G2 and their attempt and the willingness to attempt to win every single draft also will just fuck up drafts really, really badly. It happens. You need to, like, just kind of take it on the chin and accept that it's this hasn't worked and you've just got to kind of prepare a new line, a new a new formulation of strategies. See, I'm not on the fully on the other side where I obviously know that they're sandbagging or anything like that, but I do feel, feel like they were doing things that they were willing to lose with, if that makes sense. Like, I don't think they would have gone with a lot of this stuff if it was, like, in the final or whatever. I mean, Mickey X's Jarvan is one of the worst individual performances I've seen other than Ivy's Scion this split. Like, that was horrendous. And I do believe that was probably based off, like, they popped off with it, got some early kills and a scrim or something and thought, you know what, this can actually work kind of thing. I don't think that was like a legitimate, this is our current best read on the meta. Like, I personally don't believe that. But again, maybe I'm succumbing to the name power of G2 there and, and Dylan as a coach, who knows. Thorin, what do you think about G2? Do you think they're legitimately more vulnerable or do you feel like they just kind of messed up some drafts and tanked the series? I actually think the way they did play did like I, I'm sort of in the middle on this because I do think part of the problem in esports is uh, everyone does this. Whenever you think you've got a read on a team, in a way, in a static sense, you think like, right, they are this good and they do this well. And what you forget is it's always fluid. Like basically like what you choose to practice depends how much you maintain, how much you explore some other aspects. So part of it is I do wonder if after the first split, because to me, the most telling thing about G2 in the first split wasn't even how crazy the eye test was on the team. They looked so good every time they were in a game. They beat every opponent. It was actually that thing they did where they themselves put that media out there showing how everyone was cancelling all the scrims because what that implied was they probably weren't getting much out of scrims anymore because they just won every single scrim and every opponent we're not just talking about the Astralises and the low team all the teams were cancelling scrims that's what the whole point of the image was and a lot of people got it lost and they thought that was who they'd beaten it's like no now everyone in the league dodges them yeah. as though they were like the unbeatable solo queue player on the other team so that makes me wonder if they panicked and they thought right better like experiment a bit or try different styles. Plus I will say this, one of the reasons why I think sometimes people like Monty, when they big up what T1 does, don't know like the damage they're actually doing to the scene is, Bro, the amount of fucking teams I've seen watch T1 drafts and then go, we can oh. do all that. It's like, you can, they can, the joke is if you watch the file, T1 can barely do some of that shit. Yeah. Bro. Like, and you don't have Carrier or Faker. So, like, I don't know why some people try it, mate. Like, some people always try to get 500 IQ in the draft. That's why, like, Kiva says here, you can tell that one of the things I think they did, I agree, is I think, that, like you were saying about the Mickey X Jarvan. I think they try to go into these drafts with all these different versions. Like, right, we'll take Java for Yike. Oh, you didn't know we can flex to support? Ha <laughs> ha. I am fucking Yu-Gi-Oh with my trap card. Well, the problem with that is sometimes you trap yourself, don't you? Like, you, went, yeah, you opt into a flex that maybe isn't even that good. And the reason why those ones I think are so egregious is, why does Mickey X have to play Jarvan? Isn't he mm -hmm. already, like, the best support in LEC? For me, he was the MVP last split. And it's his meta right now, you moron. Just have him play whatever's meta. He'll probably win the game. Because because this even reminds me of the game they lost when they did the fucking 
um, when they played the Cassante and let like Broken Blade have the Pantheon top, it's like, bro, you've got caps. Like, why are you, is there a reason why we're not just flexing into having caps and having him on a really strong champion? Why are we doing trophy shit where inexplicably you're just playing the like non damage source? Like, I'll never fuck with that. And then I'll throw in a couple of other factors. One has to be yike. I tried warning people last split. This guy isn't even playing League of Legends yet. He's just playing with three carries. And the joke is like all the MVP candidates on his team. And by the way, that doesn't even include caps. He has fucking caps. So like what you found this split is when he actually has to play League of Legends, he's good, but he's not amazing. He's not some MVP of the league. So when he doesn't have three winning lanes, like for example, Broken Blades had a fuck ton of games where he's not winning lane. Suddenly I looks a quarter as good. When the bot lane isn't that dominant, Magically, it doesn't look as good. When Caps is on a fucking Kazan, it's not going to be as good. Like, to me, you've made the game way harder for Yike. He was playing on easy mode last time. And then even think of some of those lanes. Hans Sama is nowhere close to an MVP candidate this split. He was right up there before. People were very impressed with that bounce back. And the broken blade angle is actually quite logical. Think of the teams they've lost to, right? They've lost to teams like... Koi, who has Shigenda, the one thing you've got to give Shigenda is he, at least in lane, seems to have like a fucking carry player's mentality. He's going to go for kills and put pressure on you. So there's one player who can fuck you up. They lost a game to Astralis, right? Finn has the odd fucking flip a coin, he'll carry an odd game. And then, like, who's even left at that point in time? BDS, like, Adam actually in lane, killing people 1v1. Again, that's his whole specialty. That's actually what he's good at. So I even think, like, the way the league's set up and the opponents, like, this should be a harder time for G2. I just find it sad because to bring it all the way back i feel like if you just sat down and very cynically drafted the game and told them how you're gonna play and made it way more simple i think they're still the best team in the league they should win the league still but it was really confusing to me and this is it's like so for example um there was like a game during um the regular spot i think it was against bds where han sam was on twitch for some strange reason right they're in one of those like drafting things and he's now got a losing bottling and i was like oh this will be quite interesting because like Yike won in winter by accelerating bot lane and the bot lane accelerated him and it was the big avalanche and then 5,000 gold leads, it looks amazing, right? And I thought, wow, like, I would never imagine a rookie to understand jungle gold leads. That's the thing that impressed me the most was, like, Yike. It wasn't, like, mechanics or team fighting. He just understood jungle economy really, really well and he understood his win conditions. That's why I, I thought Yike in winter was the best performing jungler. Um, but, so he had the losing bot lane with Hans Hammer. But Broken Blade was doing really well on Gragas on this map. And he managed to evaluate and play on this. And now we see it in this um, G2 series where they put they lose both side lanes and you lose the mid lane. You now see that like Yike doesn't have the skill set that maybe some of the Yankos does, where you can play around losing lanes or lanes that are losing and accelerate them. And that's fine because Yike's like a rookie and he doesn't have to have every skill set under the sun. But it means he doesn't do that. You know what I mean? He now that is now a thing, that's a way to attack G2. He could maybe learn it, he could maybe get a little bit better at it, it's maybe something they can understand. But I think when you when you look at it in that context, I see um Yike as a guy that is like a fucking like a diamond spear tip, you know what I mean? He's gonna go right through the armor, but he hasn't got that like defensive layering jungling to like fall back on that like m the more veteran players in the league have, particularly like a loyal when he was playing good and Yankos did this season. So that... By the way, just as an aside, I'll tell you a little detail that Dom said on my show, Best Damn League show, but it's a funny point. It's counterintuitive. So Jensen Gore pointed out like, that bizarrely, if you have a look on, on Leaguepedia, the most played champion ever for Hans Sama is Varus, the current meta yeah. champion. But the point Dom made, it's quite a funny point, is... Yeah, but he's famous for being good on Draven. That actually implies he's not good on Varus, by the way. Otherwise, that would be known as his signature champion, wouldn't it? Like, no one really associates him mentally with him. And this is actually the other thing, one quick other thing is, they had the Varus in, like, the 1v1 lane um, and some of the games, uh, 1v1 ADC matchup lanes, okay? And one of the things that really disappointed me was they never actually, like, used the Varus ult to blow thumbs, uh, blow like leads and like accelerator they just left the two ad season on island they let the um varus get like a 20 30 cs lead and a couple of plates because the other adc can't match them but then that was it that's all they've done with the pick where i feel like you needed a much bigger acceleration of if that's what you're putting like hand sam on basically you need to be getting a lot more out of that 
like yeah, engine I mean, piece if you're first picking it. They haven't won nearly as many games like in the first sort of ten minutes mm-hmm. this year when it's just bot lane just snowballing into oblivion <clears throat> and yikes already at Krugs at two and a half minutes and whatever. Like it does seem and it, it's mm-hmm. sometimes hard to tell if that's like they know that teams have countered this in scrims. Like, it, like you can get developed scrim meta almost, where it's like, because you have so much of a double bluff going on, you never actually get to see the reason why they adapted, right? Because both teams know in their head that if they want to try X, then that's already countered. So there could be something of that to it as well, because I feel like the meta hasn't actually shifted much between spring and uh, winter, um, but they are inexplicably playing different, which you would never expect when it's like, well, every time Yike just pass away paths, they win. Every time the lanes push and pick the picks they're picking, they win. So why would you go away from that? And I can only speculate that teams have sort of low-key come up with so- at least soft counters. But... This no. does, oh, sorry, go on, Kira. No, 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 uh, just continue. It's fine. No, I was just going to say, but this does uh, lead me to ask the next question, which is what angle is there, if any, for SK to, to win this series? Do, do these deficiencies mean anything? I mean, Markoon is someone, someone could argue, like, very good understanding of early game pathing. Maybe Yike's been struggling recently with his early game pathing. Is that an angle, Kira? Like, but, what do you think? Like, what I'm going to say, Richard, what did Seraph take away from our show, by the way? Because ever since he spoke to us, mate, he'd been playing like fucking dog yeah, shit, mate. Yeah, actually true. I, just, actually bro, true. I actually don't know what we've done to that man on that show. Like, I was just like, holy shit, Seraph. I was like, I just praised you on Twitter and you're just not doing it for me now, bro. They proceeded to lose five games straight or something after the show and then they've now lost that seat. I was like, holy uh, He's been demoted shit. from Madagascan <laughs> vanilla back to vanilla, mate. Not yeah, like I'm like, vanilla. like he's I'm vanilla like, holy pod. shit. Uh, generally, the if they are to win, I would, I would actually, it would need to be through basically like an uptick of like exakick, and they would like need to like scale by the point where they're weakest. So you now you want to use like Markun and Irrelevant and Certus as Lenin to like scale them through G2's like early game plans and early game picks and their acceleration plays and you get to the point where Exakit can maybe be on a better scaled ADC, a Jinx, a Zeri, uh, and he can like win like good set up fights. You know, Irrelevant and Certus maybe set up the fights. Uh, I don't know how how probable that is. I think that's the, the formula for beating G2 in terms of SK. I'm just not sure you can find that line. Hmm. Oh, and what do you think, Thorin? Is there any world in which this is a really cool, close series and SK maybe has a chance? The problem I have is just more that, like, in general, irrelevant. You obviously can play the odd, you can play the jacks or whatever, but he obviously does default to the tanks to some degree. I actually want, like I said, with players like Adam and together, I want people who can sort of attack Broker Blade. I feel like he's always been someone who's. He's a little bit fragile if you get him in the right circumstances. So I agree with you. Like, the jungle one's not a bad one. If Markoon has an amazing series, they've got a chance. I'll also say, though, the problem is... The reason why everyone was so hyped on SK last split is they probably did actually have the best bot lane, if not G2's bot lane. But then again, it was hard to judge the G2 bot lane because they had all the other players and all the rest of the all pro lineup, etc. So on SK, because we assume they don't have the best players, they look like they had the best bot lane. They not only don't have the best bot lane, but the whole bot lane sort of fallen apart. Like, mm. first of all, spoiler, DOS wasn't secretly fucking key, like Kerry, <laughs> but just in ERLs for five years. Like, turn up, yeah, guess what? He was just an all right player. Like, he's not some top, top player. So that's fallen off. And then I don't know if it's that mixed with like the meta swap. Obviously, we slightly changed the ADCs we picked now. Exegate just doesn't carry the games as much now, mate. He's not bad. He's still a good player. I, I still think he's a very promising rookie, but he's he's not like the player he was last split. There's a reason why some people even had him as an MVP candidate yeah. last split. Like he was smurfing some of those games. So the big problem I have is I'd love a world where it's just Marco and Exegate can get it done. But I think I think essentially it's just Marco and I, I, I don't know how much. Here's the difference. I'm saying the Yak guy's not that good, but I, I mean, if you've got like Bo or fucking a Prime El Yoya and you can really put him feet to the fire like I'll have to see it to believe it from SK because the problem is I've never really been in on Turtles so mm. even at their peak I had my questions about that so the, the sad thing about SK is it doesn't even seem like it's anything external they've just sort of withered on the vine as a team what's you know? weird is the Exakick and this man and I know it is just like one ban is like his like historically his like best ADC ever is like Aphelios um and it's an Aphelios meta. If you like pair it with like the correct supports, you can like trade them, pinch them, do it, like twist them if you want. Um, and you just not kind of seeing those lines. Um, 
it, there's like massive gaps. Like the last games they won were all in Aphelios, I'm pretty sure, and then they've just kind of drifted out, drifted away from it when they went onto the big losing streak. So I don't know if teams just realised it's like ban Aphelios, win game one, like when Exa kicks on worst comfort. Uh, was Aphelios actually generally... banned in those games? Like, I don't know. Was it was it actually like perma banned against them, or were they just going? I, I would I, 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 I would I would I would need, need to go and check, but like I'm gonna I'm gonna go check it now. But I would assume so because like as a probably SK Gaming's like best winning line because there's like second that heat champ. So I don't know. I, I don't. I just don't see much because is irrelevant going to do bring go and like practice something for this series to like burst open Broken Blade? I've never seen that from irrelevant before. This is a problem I've had, by the way, of Irrelevant, like the whole time when I've always been in like Irrelevant is like a default generic top laner for me. Like he's fine at everything kind of, but he's never going to win you games. He's probably never going to grief you games too much. But this, he was always like, to my mind, elevated by most people to be beyond that. I'm like, oh, I can't believe he didn't win Ricky of the Split over Yonghoon. And oh my God, like this guy can actually really compete, you know, like with the, the best player. Like... Even if Broken Blade has an off off split or uh, off uh, series or whatever, you just don't believe that Irrelevant's gonna like break open that coconut and let the fucking milk pour out. Like it's just not gonna happen. He's still just gonna play him even or get a slight edge, and nothing will have been gained or lost through top lane. So that's like my problem with Irrelevant. And the other thing is, as you suggested, like Caps didn't have a good series for him. Uh, last series or whatever, Certus isn't even in the form to exploit that. Certus at times was having actually some pop-off games where he was winning the 1v1s. I think he even did really well in a particular G2 matchup where he was like outplaying Caps or whatever. I can't remember what the matchup was. I think it was Ari or something. But Certus has now, as you said, sort of fallen off a cliff a bit. <laughs> so the the like the windows for them winning, even with the sort of the weaker. Uh, potential points of G2 just don't even seem to exist. And basically, with SK to sort of surmise it in a really lazy way, every player on their team is just playing a bit worse than they were before. And I think there was a little bit of... They were overperformed slightly last split. I mean, again, for people that don't know, I had them like super high up on my uh, pre-winter ranking thing. And that was basically cheating because I just had got all this info from every team that they just, they beat everyone in scrims. They just beat everyone in scrims. And I was like, okay, scrim info is usually a bit dodgy, but fuck it. I'm just going to see what happens. But I do feel like maybe they just found this absolute perfect sweet spot in the meta that they could exploit. And as you said, maybe that was a Felios, maybe it was a couple of other things combined. And now that those have been banned out, because remember dealing with a couple of rookies here as well, once they're figured out, they kind of just go back from like a sort of can they make playoffs team to a sort of you barely made it to GSL and, you know, pipe down now, lads. So, yeah, I, I do think probably, unfortunately, this is not going to be the most exciting series, but you never know. Uh, right, let's talk about quickly the other team who await uh, the winners in the sort of... No, I don't even know what to call these stages. It's a bit convoluted. I'm not going to criticize the format. I, I do just do that. Banger, I call them BO1s, BO3s, BO5s. Yeah, just so the, next, <laughs> the last BO3, I guess. So let's talk a little bit about Koi because Koi is an interesting team because obviously they dealt G2 their first series loss of the year, but then they get duly dealt with by BDS like it's fucking nothing. Uh, so yeah, like what, what do we think of Koi? Koi are always... A kind of team where it's like we know that Larson's really good we know comps really look good we know Trimby can be really good everyone knows my opinion on Segenda I think he's fine talented but just the most pointless signing of all time and has added nothing of any increased value in my opinion uh, and then Mao Rang is is the the ultimate coin flipper you know can be great can be completely in so what do we think of this team as currently well, not constructed, but as car as they're currently looking, Thorin, like, do you have any faith in Koi that they can actually be a real contender here? Did you see anything in the G2 series where you're like, yep, they'll do that again in best of five? The obvious concern is they're going to have to play G2 again, probably. So, like, I will favor G2 to win that series. With that said, I did always think it was the same case last split that Koi is one of the teams that, in general, can somewhat match up with G2. Like, that G2, if you remember, was the one that once they accelerated, they basically just won every single game. Koi was one of the only teams, because of the style of how they draft and play, that could stay in a game like that and maybe actually be, like, a late game threat or win a team fight when they were behind. They've still got some of those elements. The problem is, the Koi story is a bit like the SK one, they're also just the worst team all in all, even the last split, even in the last year. The thing with me, if that makes them interesting and maybe gives them this puncher's chance is one, like 
it, this I, I actually think this is the year where Larson might finally get his bloody plaudits, mate. Because before he was on the team that was always first placed, so then the fan would tune in and go. This is boring. You are just hitting CS. He is obviously a fraud. But what they actually realize, I hope now, like Yankos, is like when the whole team falls apart, these guys don't fall apart, mate. Their floor is mental. Like Larson, unironically, this might be one of his best years, mate. It's just oh. really good. This split is killing it. That's but the team mean. sometimes looks shit. So first of all, if you've got a mid lane in the LEC that can consistently win lane in CS, there's a reason why Frogan's my favorite player. That's just an auto, like, step one is a tick on the plan of how you can start a winning team. So Larson already gives you a chance, at least, in these games. Like, spoiler caps isn't just going to murk him. Do you not see that series? Like, that was a very interesting set of matchups, it makes the draft interesting. Also, the reason I think Koi always has this weird status where they can be terrible, but then also inexplicably like hang in there better than you expect, is because Freddy122 just must have a completely different vision of League of Legends than any other coach. Like, Dude, every single split, it doesn't matter what the meta is. He has his own meta that doesn't even have much overlap that he's trying to draft towards. Like, he's doing it now. Like, if people don't know, like, Akali was always, like, the non-mage pocket pick of uh, Larson. But they just flex into that now, dude. That's not even something everyone else is fighting for. Like, they do it across the board. They just seem to have their own vision of what they want in draft. And I will say the upside of doing that is it means, essentially, you can sort of plan roughly what you want and then just get it because the other guy isn't, like, some, like, like angle of like it's not they get they're not trying to block you i'm going to take it from them it's like they don't want half of your picks mate that's what this one of the weird things that allows people like malrang to even be viable in my opinion they just picked something that no one else even was contesting so i think they've got so many flaws as a team but mm -hmm. they're also a team where like as, as bizarre as it sounds, because they used to have the reputation as chokers, they actually never do seem to fully break, though, if you notice. They can have a bad game or a bad series, but it's almost like they always reset to zero again, and if they get the right draft, the right player has a good game, they can win the next one. So to me, they're like the dark horse. I would call Koi, like, I think they're a gatekeeper now. I don't think they're a true, like, contender to win the title, but I think the point is, if they were to play someone like, think of the people here, if they were to play... Um, against Astralis or if they played BDS again or that that's those are the teams where it's like if you can beat Koi maybe you have a chance to win the league if you can't they'll just gatekeep you there but I think G2 and Vitality should be a cut above yeah. for me at least no I think BDS for me I think Koi's biggest problem is that the team just has too much volatility now like you the team was always built and I'm not gonna harp on about this game but the team was always built around like the absolute solid reliability of the solo laners and then you could afford oh, to sure. have you could yes. afford to have the kind of chaos a bit in the other positions. But now that uh, top lane is much more volatile, uh, doesn't mean he's a bad player, but it's much more volatile. And then Trimby and Maorang's sort of Jekyll and Hyde personalities and performances, I just don't think the team can survive, regularly survive five-game series with that much volatility now that one of the two solo laners is just not a rock anymore. Um, that's sort of been my take on New Koi since its inception. I think that is shown in the results. I mean, they used to be, if people don't remember, the team that was always, no matter what they did in playoffs, and they'd always be a decent team in playoffs, like always be a threat, you know, made a bunch of finals, whatever, obviously ultimately won it. They'd always have good regular season performances oh, just because sure. you aggregate, aggregate enough games over, to, they'll just win most of them because yes. of that solidity. And now they just don't have it. Now they're like kind of squeaking into playoffs sometimes you're like they should be winning way more games in regular season so yeah i just think there's way too much highs and downs and they've gone from having very high floor as you say they'll never collapse it's not they're not like a choke team anymore if they're just a volatile team so it's like low floor high ceiling for me and maybe the ceiling not as high as it was before but yeah what do you think here like do you think koi has any shot of, of being a real contender here let me go through the, the Koi players because I actually think Trimby is the Jekyll and Hyde guy, right? Because I actually think Trimby's like peaks are unreal. Like seeing that BDS game they lost where Larson was on mid, that Trimby on Annie was fucking saving the map, by the way, because the cunt that is Malrang, right? Okay. I am, I genuinely, it is inexplicable to me, right? Nuclear Int did not win against Larson. What he done is he brought more players mid lane and beat Lar Larson over the head with more people. But I do not know how Malrai cannot... If Trimby knows these things, if Trimby, who's literally on your team, knows to come mid, how can you, Malrai, not know to come mid? Because they lost the game because Malrai wouldn't come mid. I, I went and actually counted it. Malrai ganked three less lanes, lost Herald because they, it got smited away from him, farmed, and, it, and still ended up farming less somehow. Mm -hmm. 
than Shield. And I don't think Shield's like a god, by the way. Like, I don't think he's some fucking like French mastermind Napoleon Bonaparte invading countries. Like he's he was an up tech, upbeat jungler who's like striding well with BDS. And Malrang's like literally getting fucking egg shot on his head by this guy. Like I actually think Malrang is the worst jungler in LEC right now by like I'm down there with um Xerxes who's just been removed from that. I've absolutely had it with him. He should be removed from like because I think I'm j- because I actually think Larson is pl- is literally because people just don't realize Larson is literally a god in terms of what he does in t- in mid lane. The the burden that he fucking it's like some Atlas shrug shit that he just literally has the whole world fucking falling down on him and he just doesn't give a shit, mate. He's it's unreal how good Larson is as a By the player. way, just a quick side. His gank survivability this split has been oh, been nutty. Like Absolutely yes. nutty. By the way. Now, I'll, I'll even say if people don't know, that's another classic flogging trait. Is like you know your jungler's never coming, so you just better learn. Like you better get those fancy feet and fucking yeah. dodge, mate. By the, way, dodge. by the way, something that I really <laughs> uh, that really pissed me off, and yes, in part as well, because you know I represent him, whatever. But when he survived that gank against BDS, and they're like, oh, that's just a hook Labroff has to hit. He's so, he's Larson so in their head at that point. That's not a bad hook. He thinks he's going to dodge to that yes, side, exactly. and he doesn't. He presses yeah. S, and then he dodges up, and then comes back down, like. Th- th- at that point, like I don't think these casters realise like these are m- tiny little micro things. Like he, it's fifty fifty, or actually it's it's thirty three thirty three. He's either going to stay still, dodge one way, or dodge the other. He guessed the wrong way and he dodges. But it was re- a really impressive gank dodge, and he's been insane at that this split so far. Sorry, Kira, I cut you off. No, it's all right. And then I was talking to a bunch of people in your Discord at the time, Thorn, because they're talking about like comp is like a lot worse. I was like, I generally think comp is worse. But I actually think Comp has just always been this player. The, the meta is just less favourable for Comp. He's not playing Lucian as much. He's not playing Callista as much. Caitlyn's not as viable. Like, if I go down all, like... like I go down champions, all the, yeah. Yeah, like, if I go... Ezreal's, like, not as good. They try, they try and force it. It doesn't work. Like, if I begin to explain it to you like that, it's not this infathomable thing that, like, Comp has gotten 60% worse. It's like, no, like, Comp... It's, it's just not as good a meta for comp and Rogue will not draft power picks like meta contextual picks and I respect them for it it's like why I actually like Malrang as a player he genuinely doesn't give a fuck he will play Malrang champions to the ends of the earth and he will not pretend to be um something he isn't he's just playing terribly right now and then Zagen does whatever the fuck like he had to try and like carry carry that um Kennen game uh, and it just didn't happen. So that's where I think Koya is right now. Yeah, I think... I don't think way, it means... I... Sorry. One quick thing I want to throw in is, this is why, even though everyone flamed the fuck out of us, as you can imagine, when actually Rogue was at their best and they won last split, I even always used to say, I still don't consider Malrag a top three jungler. Yeah. Like, he was never on my all pro. And the reason why is, I always had this suspicion that what people were doing, analysts have, it's unfortunately because people want everyone to be doing good things and to big them up on broadcast. Every Everyone wants to believe everything's genius and 700 IQ and if they did something wrong, even it was planned for. And so I, everyone tried to, to make it sound like Malrang just assessed what was wrong in like the inspired rogue and he was like mm, and we need to be more activity and it's like no bro he would do this no matter what team he was on yeah. and I feel totally vindicated in that take by the way yeah. because as you see now he would do this on Heretics by the way on Heretics he would do all the same thing he would buy wards he would not complete items he'd come out on a ruby crystal now listen it wouldn't work he'd be trying to get heavy or ruby ahead but he would try it anyway that's just who he is as a player I think so unfortunately that's also the downside is like that did sort of pair well with the old squad with Oduam, mate. It feels like that's also just aged so badly in the Shigenda lineup, mate. Like that because I don't even think Malrang's bad. He's just on the wrong team. I just think he's like, on the wrong I, team, mate. Like if, if you put if you like put him on like a team like I don't know. Like I was trying to think if you if you like play someone to something like Astralis, he can be like a substitute for like one one three in some ways. Even though I think one one three is currently a better version of Malrang, but that's just like the weather changes. Tomorrow, 113 could yeah. be the 10th best jungle, and Malrang could be better than 113. So, like, it's about to get into that. The, the other thing that was super, super uh, strange was the. Oh, the in the G2 series, right? That actually was a, an example of. It's not that Malrang was playing well, it was a, it was what Malrang does best, where he will literally just sit like level five in a bush and you like walk by him in the bush and what you don't realise is you're walking into Larson and then Malrang shows up behind you and you're like, oh, I've been 2v1. And he got like the nice flash kick with Dan Sama. Those like little tricky plays are like what Malrang's really good at and it's what he taught the LEC junglers. I can imagine scrimming against this guy is so much fun. But I just don't think 
correlate to consistent wins. Like, yeah. G- when I think of how GT lose to them, it's they 5D chess themselves and, like, Larson just as a god and just, like, beats them. But, like, by the way, if you actually count it, how many games are in a row now, by the way, that Larson's, like, giving it to the Caps, he's doing, like, pretty fu- he's doing it pretty He's doing it pretty fucking well, by the way. He's, like, one of the only players, even though Caps isn't in, like, prime Caps form, um, he's, it's unbelievable uh, what he's doing. People have to keep in mind as well with like the when Rogue won um, the uh, su- the last summer split. It's like yes, they're a really good team. They have really good players, but there is a concept as well of like hitting a purple patch. And that weekend in Malmo, they were just unbelievable. Like everyone was unbe- Everyone was smashing lane. Um, Malrang's plays were all being followed up on by Apex Trimby. It was Apex Comp. Like. And Larson was was Larson, so I I do think people need to contextualize that as well. I do feel like Maorang is kind of low key living off that weekend still in terms of like his performance and how people view him. But yeah, right. Let's uh, move on to um, what I think personally is going to be an absolutely banger series because it is of course BDS versus Vitality, which will be the first best of five. Um, obviously BDS red hot number one in the regular season looked really good last series but vitality similarly red hot were pretty good in regular season as well looked even better uh certainly in their last game of the last series so i think this is a really interesting one because again before the start of the split i think we would all have said if upset works like at the first point of seeing that the upset you know is gelling well with the team or whatever we'd probably all pick vitality even though bds were not too bad last split either they definitely thought we, we definitely thought they overperformed but actually bds has looked just really good and actually really consistent and even though i feel like their play style is like not super replicable because you're not always sure where like the wind's going to come from if that makes sense it is actually getting a little bit tighter and a little bit cleaner every time i see them I actually thought they were really good last series so this is now suddenly to me even though you know i'm sure we all have a favorite here a bit of a pick em. so thorin like what do you make of this series do you think first of all do you think it is going to be a really close series and who who do you favor by the way just a tiny point of context doesn't mean too much bds won the regular season game but you know doesn't necessarily mean much i think that was quite early on as well i think that's one of the first games um no no it was on the last week it was on week oh, was three. it yeah oh okay that was the one where if you remember perks tried doing the gragas mid and then spoil it it oh, wasn't like yeah. great gragas mid okay. if people remember that one so that, that's also the reason i don't pick, take that game too much into account i essentially think vitality won't draft that way again the key thing for me is this i actually do think bds on paper for me they are actually the third best team like i think uh, like I, I i actually do think they're gonna lose the vitality but i do think they are a cut above everyone else like uh, that, that's why i'm very interested if we get a best of five to see bds coy i would like to see that match to see essentially like i say will coy be the gatekeeper and can bds ascend past them the problem i have with the bds angle is like first of all if I look at some of the player matchups, I actually think this is surely one of the worst teams they can play against. Like, for example, Adam needs people that he can just get in lane and 1v1 abuse when the jungle's not there or get a kill where they don't understand his matchups. Like, he has, like, the weird one where you think you've got the counter, but he plays the, that one matchup in every fucking point. Right? He's not going to get that against Photon. The Photon guy is unbelievably consistent and, quite frankly, just doesn't play that way. Like, this guy just doesn't lose. So I think the Adam fact is not really that big of a deal for me. Perks hasn't played great, but at the end of the day, he is Perks. Like, I'm not really taking him to just smash the lane. And I just don't buy the angle that Nook's actually some like, elite fucking mid laner. Here's another one. Like I said about Malrang, spoiler, take Nook, put him on any other team in the bottom half, have him play a nice sample size, by the way. I'm not trying to trick him. Don't have him play four games. Have him play like 20 games as a member of fucking Heretics, and you will quickly find out he is nowhere close to the best mid laner. Nowhere close. He's not even in the conversation. So I'm sorry, I don't really give a fuck that you can draft correctly. Shio can play the few champions out of the meta right now. You get the odd kill from Adam. Crowney just carries the whole game. And then Nook just gets to play as here. Like, I don't give a shit, mate. So on that angle, Perks isn't even in the greatest form. But Perks doesn't even have to outlay him to beat him in this series. And I know everyone's hyped about the Crowney angle. I am as well. Crowney is fucking sick. Should be an MVP candidate. His problem is, I think Upset is just the best Western player right now. Mate, 
Not only is this guy's flaw impossible, he just has a good game every game. This is mental. Like, I think that guy is going to fucking torture these playoffs. So I, I just think the problem I have is I think BDS has been really good. This is the wrong opponent. I'll be very interested if they play like a best of five against Koi. If they have to play G2 in a low bracket, that's a fun matchup. That's, we can have a conversation there. But I actually think Vitality, quite frankly, if you want to go back to that side select episode where we were picking for this split, I actually think I nailed it. Vitality started with Upset, who didn't play the previous split, so they've had to work their way into the same form that people like G2 could just come into the split on. And quite frankly, every stage, they look better. So in my, from where I'm at, if they track, they will actually be, when they get to this final after this match, in the form I hope they would be, which is all the players are good, everyone has their identity. You, you finally even got the draft. Like I think even Vitality's been through a mini G2. They've tried all these crazy, weird drafts because in theory they can play through any lane, right? Well, the problem with that is, early on, you're also going to 200 IQ yourself. Eventually in the playoffs, you just find what works for you. You go to that and you win. So in my opinion, when they, write, when they find the right draft around upset, they try not to get too cheeky with perks. Just do a simple draft. I think you beat BDS. Also, there's the experience factor I'll throw in as well, which is BDS just have to prove it to me. It reminds me of when SK made that playoff run last split. I actually do think SK was the second best team in that split. They could have gone to the final. But when you saw against Mad Lions, half of what won that game for Mad Lions was experienced themselves. Mm. They just looked like they'd been there. And you know, when you're the experienced team and the other one isn't, you're also sort of like waiting. Like, give them a chance. See if they fuck it up. So that's the problem. Everyone knows BDS and BO1s do mad throws. So if they can hold the restraint, I'll just tip my hat that they're the better team. But I think Vitality is going to get them. So what Thorin's really saying is if BDS win, it'll be because of Lavrov diff, really. Because, you know, all the... I mean, Lavrov, pretty sweet. Well. Lavrov definitely plays massively based on his ADC. I yeah. can tell you that. Like, he looked completely different when he had old crown shot to when he had Kazi to when he had crown shot now. So, yeah, yeah. he definitely has gotten better split on split with these players. I'll give him that. Yeah, what do, what do you think here? Like, do, do you actually... Do, who do you actually favour in this matchup? Do you favour Vitality? Oh. Okay. You know me, Rich. Yeah. I've... By happenstance, Vitality didn't just like fucking like just go on a brainwave and they actually do recognize that the laners need to play for bow and not bow for the laners, then I think Vitality can just beat everyone. Yeah, if you just let us draft for Bo, <laughs> I guarantee we're going to win all these games. Because if he but, if he tries to play like supportive, I'm with you. If yeah. I can just give him Lee Sin and shit every game, he's they're going to smurf. I'll tell because you right now. I genuinely think, like, because I, I remember I admitted this before, when Bo was playing for perks advantages, and they won all those regular season games in winter, I was like, I would not have believed that that version of Vitality could have been that good. Yeah, right? sure. I, I thought yes. it would have been a lot worse, right? But then we yeah. see what happened. They lost in the BO3s, and it kind of fell to pieces, right? But now we're in the BO3s, and they had let Bo. They even had Upset playing Draven, which uh, Upset's not the best like Draven player, right? But the thing, is, then, the thing it does is it guarantees you bot push, because you can't contest it. Bo made money on it. He done absolutely amazing things with it, because... He's just that's the thing that Bo like Bo's good at. That's like his skill set. Um, like the Wukong game, mega. The Lee Sin game, absolutely mega. I apps. I really, 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 really want them to realize that and take in the fact that they've hit that stride. So as long as they understand that and they strategize the draft like that, I think that they will be. Um, I think they will be BDS. Oh, BDS, uh, yeah. BDS. Yeah, Vitality will be uh, BDS. Uh, the thing, the only thing that I could see, not it's not so much going wrong, it's the fact of like, I just agree with you, Thorn. Generally, I think Photon is like, I describe them as like a stat stick, which sounds really like condescending, but in a strange way, it's a good thing because he's like so consistent. And I'm talking about like good stats. <laughs> like he lanes very, very well, good champion pool. Um, when he can roam mid, he does use like roam mid movements. Team fights well, understands like turret priority. It does the same things every single game, but it's often against like people who have actually got like similar play patterns. And Adam sometimes doesn't have those play patterns. Like I'd be, I really want to see what would happen when if what Photon's response to like the Scion pick would be. Like if Vitality are going to just ban Scion out for the series or stick Photon on Scion, or are they going to plan for the Scion strat? Because every single team that's played against the silent strat somehow for some strange and unknown reason it's fell for it and it's just it's weird to watch but it works uh and adam is like these... one of the most shameless players in the league you have to keep in mind as well like that game where he was like i don't even know what his score was but he was just basically turbo inting but he was just playing it in he reminds me in in some ways of like whippo a little bit where he'll play these picks on side where you're like this isn't going to work or contribute or he's going to chain in and he does, but somehow there's still like 
some kind of wacky winning angle to it. And I feel like, in a way, like, and yeah, I agree with Thorin on the uh, sort of the matchup thing and how it's like a bad matchup for BDS. I do think you can kind of flip it a little bit and be like, Photon's the best top laner, like, in the league right now, like, bar none anyway. So who is the worst matchup for him? It still might actually just be Adam, even though that's the worst matchup for Adam. So I do think, yeah. like, depending on, I think so much of this series is on draft. I think if someone with half a brain is drafting vitality should win because you draft towards bow you draft sort of on you know to go even or whatever it, from a theoretical perspective on top and you shouldn't really be able to lose unless crowny is just super inspired but um yeah i, I don't know sorry go on Kira. what were you gonna say but there's like there's lots of really nice things vitality like first of all again i was speaking to people and i was talking about how like they had like the perks um Annie game, right? And everyone always downplays playing Annie because it's like playing when people would play Vigar, they like oversimplify it, right? And apart from the fact in that series he was not like doing like side lanes very well, he was actually like making like really good like Annie plays. Like for example, the Baron play where he sits in dark vision, waits for Kobe to like walk up without um thumbs and he blows up Kobe and wins the game. Right? You, you, you're, um, this might sound like I'm oversimplifying here, but there's a million Annie players, like Leader done this, where he just sits in the Baron pit and damages the Baron with Annie. You know what I mean? Like, recognising those, like, play patterns is, like, good. Like, I, I wouldn't want to give perks Annie in all these games. So, like, what, we're now banning, like, fucking Lucian because nobody believes in giving Lucian Nami to upset. We're banning Annie, and then we're banning... Oh, wait, we've ran out of bans now for bow. So what are we... Like, which of the bow picks are we, like, switching on? Like... There's like re re revolutions to like these things where I just always see Vitality getting the draft set up exactly what they want. So I feel like it's really on BDS to r try and basically snipe, get like th not three cheese strats, but like like th like three like winning like drafts that they can like consistently beat Vitality on. Because I'm not sure even if when they like switch sides and you go you get the two solo lane counter picks, like. Does Adam really want to be like you're because BDS has to save the last picks for Adam? It's like, but you can't because you just counter pick on one, two. It's like they're the worst games for BDS, so mm. I'm quite big on Team Vitality mm. winning this. Okay, interesting. I'm gen genuinely like, I, I hadn't really thought about it to the point where I'd like make a pick. I, I think I prefer BDS just because, again, I do think Vitality is another team, sort of like Koi, where there's still a you're lot of. I don't, I, trust, I don't trust, I have not seen consistency of drafting and that worries me a little bit. I feel like Vitality is just better than they were before purely because upset's there and they've had a few games where they've played like a little bit towards bow. But I feel that's been more happenstance than anything else. I don't feel like there's been a, a, a conscious effort to like, oh, actually, if we play towards bow, then things are better and upset's going to play how he plays anyway. Like, I, 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 after this series, maybe I'll completely change my opinion on that, but I just feel like uh, BDS are a more consistent one, team. Yeah. One more thing. There is actually a, a version of Vitality that's even like, I think they could even be slightly better because I remember talking about this. Kaiser, obviously, back in the day, was like playing for a lawyer's advantages in um, the old Mad Lions, right? Now, uh, upset's a lot bigger, like, uh, lane. Uh, fixed player, but a lot of the game is on like support engages. I would really love to see Kaiser starting to develop. Um, that's like the improvement for Vitality. Like I think that's the one that really brings that team out. As if Kaiser gets mid jungle uh, uh, support jungle synergies and mid support synergies, because that's where I actually think this team is generally the weakest. Is that like Kaiser doesn't link up with Bo very well, and Kaiser doesn't play around uh, perks very well. Um, I think he's been a lot better compared to what he played in winter. Uh, but that's where I think that this, this team, if I start seeing that, I can start talking about them being like the favourites for the LEC and being an actual contender and like a team that I would really want to send to MSI. Yeah. Let me uh, finish by asking you this, guys, because I think this is something worth discussing, which is if Vitality, let's say Vitality don't win this series, let's say, Vi say Vitality don't win the final. Obviously, the reason why I'm asking this for Vitality is they're an organization who've consistently shown that they're willing to just splash the big bucks and they clearly basically want to just buy a title. And I'm not necessarily being critical of that, but that does seem to be the ethos. What do they change if they fall short this time around? Like, where do you go from here? Is it Kaiser? To me, that would probably maybe be the obvious angle or, or do we just decide that it's just not quite enough synergy with the two asian players like what do you think thorin like if, if vitality don't win a title 
What do you think? What What's the move here? Like, they've got upset. Clearly, that's been a big upgrade. How would this team become title winners if they can't get it done this time? I mean, the big problem they have is basically, if it's not Kaiser, how could you even justify kicking anyone else out the team? Because the only other player, really, that, like, eye test-wise has problems is Perks. And as far as we know, it just is Perks' team. I mean, I know in the off-season, like, fucking Neo, whatever his name, that, like, head guy of Vitality made it, like, no, it's actually Bo's team who we burst around him. It's like, yeah, but there's a reason why you got Perks' contract. Yeah. And as far as I know, before Bo, it was Verks' team. So I don't get the vibe, like, you bail on Perks after one split, especially because part of the reason you want him in your team is like things that he brings like he's a veteran he's a captain he has aspects around the team quality so to me I, I think you're in a tough spot look I don't think it's going to be a problem in fact that's even one of the reasons why with this lineup as long as there's not like some direct personality issue between like perks and upset or something that's also why I bank on it eventually working if they have to replace Kaiser but they get someone that works really well doesn't the team just become even better like at that point you retain all your strengths and maybe level up even more so I agree with you though if you look at the team it's one of the best things, actually, if you're a fan in any of the games of Vitality, is you get the feeling that it is like a massive... It's like Real Madrid. They could yeah. be bad one year, but you know they're going to get up some players eventually that are going to be good, and they're going to move on the players that are problematic. So in the long run, I do sort of have faith that they will eventually get to the right players if it isn't this one. I think this lineup is already pretty banging. What do you think, Kira? Uh, Like, there's, like, different lines you could take. I wouldn't remove any of the top... Like, the first four, it would definitely be, like, Kaiser. I would actually run it back before I remove Kaiser. Uh, I, I had the same ethos with like the XL team. Um, I would like, just in like generally looking at it, I would have ran it back before I started like fucking about with things. Um, that's just like from the outside. Uh, same thing with Vitaly, but if you like, put a gun to my head, made me, I would flip it on Targamas. Oof, okay. Like, 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 or you just go to ERLs and you just like you could you phone up the ten thousand ERL consultants and be like, "Hello, Mister ERL consultant, who is the biggest not a cunt, and can we put him on our team, please?" Like that's the next level you're at because you're not really going like at support level. Who are you going to go and get from the LEC team? Are you going to go buy Mickey X? Right, that we're now just living in fantasy land, right? Okay, so like, it's no, it's just not happening. So uh, that's a, that's a, that's the only line I see. I wouldn't remove change or remove any of the other players awesome just one final word before we do end here based on because obviously the last time we talked about this Soren, was before the last round of games do you feel differently now about if vitality played g2 having seen g2 sort of crumble a bit in yes. that best off do you, do you feel like there's now a closer dynamic between how that series might go Oh, here's the thing, because I actually do think some of the players are really good in Vitality. I'll say Vitality wins the split. I actually do think now, like I said, they're tracking the right way. Crucially, G2 has also shown some flaws. And quite frankly, this is also why I will really love if they play the best of five in the final. Because that whole take I've had on Yike from day one he came into LEC is going to age like a motherfucker when Bo violates him in the LEC final. So all I want is them to turn up, just all the players play well, and then let's see what these junglers are made of, shall we? Because all I'm telling you is, like he says... If they draft for him, Borg just fucking wrecks anyone, mate. Anyone in the LEC. Yeah. That's yeah. what I, that's what I want as well, basically, because that is the best version of like the final for me. You get Broken Blade gets to go up against the best top laner. Point to prove. You get Perks versus Caps. Amazing narrative. Like amazing. Yike versus Bo, the two like carry like jungle players, uh, like that are ultimate like offense. Tora, 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 just gunning at each other's head. You've got um. Uh, what's his name? Upset taking the crown from Hansama, like the whole best Western ADC, like even though it might be a bit more muddy than that, but like, you know what I mean? There's so many good ones that I think it's just the picture perfect matchup. Basically, if I get any other matchup apart from that, I'll always just be a bit like, well, if we're sending a different team to MSI because that is the killer fucking money match. It's, and all the lights kind of point towards it. There's obviously a lot of games yes. still to be played, but I'm gunning for it. How uh, is uh, that's what I want. How is the second team decided? Like, if G2 makes the final again, oh. or let's say G2 wins again, how do they decide who goes? It's oh. all based, like I said, on Mad Lions and Coy's points, basically. So those are the two. If, if it's oh, not them, no. then you need, like, Vitality to win, basically, or something, right? Uh. Yes. So the way it works is, is it's like, there's... Uh, you want Mad Lions to go out right now. Because okay. if Mad Lions make it by Coy, then Mad Lions like, then go. Because on the average, no, right. no other team can beat them. If Coy then make it... Um, into the next like part, they have to make it like one step further in the bracket, and then they're definitely going to go. That's the thing that Thorne was insinuating to earlier. Yes. They're like, 
fuck, fuck me, we've dealt with Mad Lions. We could actually end up having fucking Koi yep. going of all fucking things. So you're so, telling me I've got a route against my pick for the final. That yeah. is devastating but, news. So to send the best teams, we unironically need Team Vitality to beat... I need Vitality need to beat G2. That's their only way to path if Koi makes it through the lore. It's, bro, it's fucking crazy. It really is. Yeah. It's rough. Silly me thinking, you know, you have the winner of the first split and then, you know, maybe the yeah. winner of the <laughs> second split or if it's the same team, the team that came closest. Okay, whatever. Uh, okay, well, yeah, we're going to leave it there then, guys. Thank you all for watching and we will see you next time.